in our products called ICM Pro and ICM Chemist Pro. Okay, so the first uh, set of tools we're going to look at um, are the ligand editing. So, for example, here on the right-hand side, we have a, a kinase with a, with a ligand bound. And we may want to, to optimize this ligand in 3D. So you can fully edit this ligand on the fly using these, this panel of tools, which I'll show you inside ICM. So we have um, ways to change the atom type. You can change the charge of a particular atom. You can rotate uh, the torsion angles. We can change the bond types from single, double to triple bonds. We can change uh, stereo as well as um, uh, switch between cis and trans and see the effect of the, the ligand down to the pocket by doing that. Um, by default, the, the editing is in 3D, but you can also edit in 2D here. And then there are uh, some other options for, for when you make the edits, you can then redock the ligand. For example, you can set tethers so you can allow certain atoms to be to remain in place when you redock the ligand, or you can set uh, distance restraints between certain atoms, which you know uh, make important interactions. So all of these things are done on the fly. You make a change, it automatically does a small minimization and you get a score for that interaction. If you make, if you, you can delete atoms and um, if you make a deletion, uh, you can always undo and redo all of them. And then in this lower panel here, we have a, a selection of inbuilt um, substituents. So you can select certain substituents and click on an atom and it will sample those uh, substituents and, and give you a prediction of, of which one is which one is the, the, most, uh, the better um, substituent, which we'll show you. Okay, so for the first uh, part of the demonstration, I'm going to go to ICM. So when you open ICM Pro or ICM Browser, you, ICM Chemist Pro, you will see this uh, interface as shown here. If there's no objects displayed, you will see two tabs, one called Search and one called Lig Edit. The Lig Edit tab is the um, is the, the tab which contains all the options for the ligand editor. Um, but first we're going to, to read in into ICM a, a structure. The code is 1UNL. So you just type 1UNL and that will read in, in the protein. It's a CDK uh, kinase. It has uh, two two kinase domains, A and B. And one of the kinase domains has a, a ligand uh, bound to it, riscovitine, which is an experimental drug uh, for, this, for this target. Okay. So we can see that um, the, the, the ligand is bound to the the ATP binding site in the kinase, with the hinge region here, with the beta uh, glycine rich loop here, and alpha C here. Okay, so we may want to just uh, see how this uh, ligand interacts with this protein. So we can do that by going to the ligand editor tab, and we can set up the, the ligand editor tab. So to do this, we work our way along these buttons here on the top. The first option is to tell ICM which, which of the molecules that you have loaded is the, is the ligand. And in this example, we only have uh, one small molecule, um, which is this one here. And um, so it's listed here in, in ligand molecule option. If you had more, you'd have a list to choose from. Uh, we can auto assign formal charges based on a selected pH for this ligand uh, by clicking here. But if you've already assigned those charges, you, you may want to unselect for the, 
uh, this will do a reasonable job at doing that. But you may want to double check the charges once it's once it's done. And go OK. You see, when you've done that, uh, we have we now have two separate objects. We have the original X-ray structure, and we have the ligand uh, converted to an ICM object here, which is so we can toggle that on and off here. So the next step in the ligand editor is to uh, define the ligand binding pocket. So in most cases, uh, you're going in the ligand editor. You you're generally using it to uh, optimize the ligand. So you'll always have you usually have a ligand in place. Um, but if you don't, then that's not a problem. You can use uh, tools such as ICM Pocket Finder, which will find cavities in your protein. And then you can use the docking tools to dock, dock there. Um, but in this scenario, we have the ligand in place. So we go to the next button along, which is set up receptor. Uh, this arrow mark is, um, I just had a question on, on, on the chat. It's related to um, when you read in a protein uh, in ICM, it reads uh, annotation from Unipot, so it's, it just takes annotation and it's, uh, it's giving us some more information. It's a binding site, a specific binding site registry for this um, for this protein. It's, it's directly from Unipot, so yeah, we can undisplay that. Thanks for the question. Um, so yeah, so it's to, to, to next step is to set up the receptor. We go to this button here, and we get a set up receptor but, um, dialog box. It's asking us which object is the Receptor, you may have multiple objects. We only have one uh, protein structure here, one UNL. Uh, in some instances, you may have uh, water molecules that you in the binding pocket that are critical for that ligand to bind in the pose that you, you observe. Um, so you may want to keep the water in, um, in, in the receptor. Uh, then there are two options which are, are important because we read this in as an X-ray structure. It doesn't have hydrogen atoms, and there would be certain missing um, uh, missing atoms in some residues. Uh, so we can select here to, to optimize the hydrogen, and we can also optimize the hydrogen bonding network for um, asparagines and glutamines and histidines to make to uh, optimize the, the positioning of those residues. If we didn't know where the binding pocket was, we could use the pocket finder option here by clicking here. Um, but in this example, we know the ligand's there, so we just click on make box around existing ligand. You can see we have a purple box now around the ligand. The, the purple box is usually um, a reasonable size to encompass the ligand that you have in, in place. But if, for example, you're, you're trying to design away from the ligand uh, a little bit more further out of the pocket, you may want to increase the size of this box um, here by clicking and dragging in the corners of the of the box. Um, so once you're happy with the, the box, this is where we'll generate the, the potential maps for, for this uh, thing. So we just go OK. And um, it lets you know that it's optimizing certain residues. It's building maps. So we have, for example, um, so it's, it's finished. It's bu finished building the maps. I just can't display that properly. So you can you can toggle the maps here. So we have, um, for example, Van der Waals, uh map potential grid potential maps using a carbon probe. Uh, this is the GC map. Uh, we have um, Hydro, hydrophobic interaction map, hydrogen bonding, um, a, a Van der Waals uh, grid potential map using a hydrogen probe rather than the carbon probe, and uh, for example, electrostatics here. So this provides an environment which allows you to modify the ligand and and make make changes and redock and assess the the, the interactions. You see, when we did this, we have we still have the original X-ray structure here, and um, we also have the 
uh, the object for the, the receptor, which we're using in the docking, and we also have the ligand object. Okay, so uh, I showed in the slide where the, those tools were, but you can click on here to edit the, the ligand. You may want to do a small minimization step first, um, just to remove some clashes, and you can do that by clicking on this button here, which is a minimization button. The one next to it is a full docking, um, which is a longer sampling, but the minimization will just do a small sampling of the of the ligand and remove any clashes. So um, to edit, we can, for example, click on an atom here and just a single click on an atom in the, in the ligand will change that atom, for example, here from a carbon to a nitrogen. We can change um, bond types by clicking on a on a bond, and um, so it's changing it from single to double. And back again. Like that. Uh, we could, if you if you wanted more elements, um, you can go more and you get the periodic tables and you can change there. You can adjust the charges here. We can rotate torsions like this by clicking on a clicking on a on a on a bond and then rotating. So sort of manually dock it yourself if you wanted to do it. Any changes you make, you can undo using the undo button. Okay. We can erase atoms by clicking on the eraser button here and moving them like this. And everything is preserved, so you can always go back to your original ligand. In the next example, we'll, we'll try and optimize this ligand and, uh, and, uh, and make some, some changes. You can also edit in 2D by clicking here, which will bring up the, the 2D editor. So you can, you can make changes by adding bonds here, for example. You'll notice on the right-hand side that the uh, key properties, such as hydrogen bond acceptors, hydrogen bond donors, number of rotatable bonds, are automatically updated as, as you sketch, which can be helpful sometimes. Uh, volume, flag certain groups um, that are interested, interesting. Um, certain group, bad groups, which may be, for example, be react reactive, uh, will be flagged. Um, anything which we deem as being um, uh, poor properties, like high well, P, for example, um, you start to see it turn from green to, to orange to red here. So any changes you make, you can just close and it asks you to submit changes and go more. Okay. Right. So these are the, the main tools. These, these other tools I'll show later on, which are for the for docking and for, for um, fragment-based uh, drug design. Okay. So you can use, also use the ligand editor for visualization purposes. For example, you may want to display the, the pocket of the receptor colored by uh, properties. So here we have the, the same ligand um, in the pocket, and we have um, the surface colored by the green for hydro for viscosity. Uh, white is uh, sort of a neutral region. Blue is uh, hydrogen bond uh, donors, and uh, red is hydrogen bond acceptors. There's also another type of uh, display, a surface display, which is called a ligand pocket surface, which is kind of the opposite to the receptor pocket surface, and it allows you to visualize uh, another way of visualizing where there's cavities in which you can you can build onto your molecule. 
There's a one-click way of displaying hydrogen bonds. Uh, we can also display energy circles. There's an example here in this example uh, where the interactions are good. The, each atom is um, surrounded by a green sphere. And if you make any additions to the to the um, to the molecule, uh, you'll see these red clash marks here. Uh, you can also display the relaxed um, ligand in a relaxed form, so you can compare it with the the docked form. So if your ligand is in a particular particularly strained conformation compared to the relaxed ligand, it may not be the the best um, uh, ligand uh, conformation. Uh, you can also uh, identify unsatisfied, unsatisfied hydrogen bonds, uh, which helps in ligand design. So I'll show you that in ICM. Okay. So the visualization tools are, are mostly in this in this drop down button here. A useful one is called Pretty View, which uh, automatically displays the the pocket in ribbon uh, in um, sort of a tube representation, and the, the sticks are thicker, and the key residues are, are labelled. Uh, for better representation, for if you're making a, an image, for example, for a paper, you can use this button here, which toggles the high quality, so you can see that the um, the roughness around the edges has just been removed, and the anti-aliasing has been activated. So um, it's going to display that surface. So the two surfaces I mentioned were the receptor pocket. You click here. You can you can see the receptor pocket. That's useful. You can see where maybe you could possibly build. And the other representation is called the ligand pocket surface, which is shown here. This gives you a, a little bit. It guides you as to what substituent you may want to add at one particular point, and um, it's kind of the a, a useful way to to better visualize where there's cavities um, to build into. So those are the two um, surfaces that you can display. There are other surfaces that you can build in the meshes tab, but they're sort of unrelated to the ligand directly. Uh, they're not directly related to this ligand editor, but you can use those in the meshes tab. Okay. So you can toggle the hydrogen, you can see here we have a hydrogen bond with the hinge region, and another one here, there's two hydrogen bonds. We can toggle those hydrogen bonds on and off using uh, this button here. And we can, um, as I mentioned before, we can display the relaxed version of the ligand with the most energetically favorable conformation. So the ligand, the relaxed form is shown in yellow. And we can also um, flag some unsatisfied hydrogen bonds. So they're shown in purple spheres there. Okay. So um, yeah, that's basically the the, the key uh, interactions shown here. So we could maybe start um, editing this ligand. The I say the the other thing is the uh, that's shown are the um, the variables, uh, the rotatable bonds that you could rotate. As shown with rings here, you can show different ways of showing the uh, uh, the angles of the, the torsion angles, and um, you can also display these energy circles here. So um, when we're building, we can we can keep those those circles displayed, and that will help us uh, identify any clashes. So if we go back to our panel here, we can start adding sampling groups. You may want to display the hydrogens to do this if you want to add, click on a hydrogen in order to add. So if we just chose a, a group here, placed it here, 
for example. You can see that the, the group is being uh, sampled. Um, basically, that substituent is being docked in that environment, and it's jumping around. So you can see that that uh, rash decision to place that substituent there was, was not a very good idea because we've uh, produced uh, major clashes here. So it doesn't matter. We can just undo that. We're back to the original ligand. When you're designing the ligand, um, it's a good idea to keep an eye on um, on, on what we call the, the VLS score or the ligand strain. So at the moment, um, the, the molecule is, is very strained. We may want to do a small minimization, and that will improve the strain. It's also improved um, the score slightly here. So the lower the score, uh, the better the interaction, the better predicted interaction. OK. So if we, uh, for example, delete some atoms again, here, we can reevaluate the score. It's, my, it's, gone, it's gone up from minus 24 to, to minus 19. So th those, those interactions, obviously, um, help uh, in for this second to bind. So once again, we can undo those interactions and uh, evaluate the score. Okay. So um, as I mentioned, the one way of, of of one option to to to, to visualise the pocket in a better way is to look at the ligand pocket surface. And in this. Oops, just make sure you <laughs> just make sure you don't have the delete uh, button selected. Um, you can see that we have like a hydrophobic region here uh, that we and here that we may want to to use to um, to improve the binding of this of this ligand. So um, what I could do is some different uh, approaches to this. We may we may want to see if we can find a substituent. That uh, binds well, or that would be a good substituent to this ligand here at this point. One way of doing that would be to go to advanced, the advanced option, and there's a an option called find group. So basically, this is a database of substituents, and so you can uh, you basically you can uh, calculate. <coughs> uh, you click on an, on a hydrogen atom. And uh, <clears throat> it will sample those um, those substituents. Or you can you can also use your inter your own tables, and it will, will basically dot that ligand. Um, but if you want to do it on a smaller scale, that, that would probably take about thirty minutes to run, maybe maybe less than that actually, depending on the speed of your computer. Um, but in this, just for the sake of this demonstration, we'll just select some halogens here. So I selected four. I can toggle them on and off using this. And we will sample those halogens at this position here. So I select them and simply click on the hydrogen atom. And you can see at the bottom in the right um, hand, hand, hand corner, it's telling us that it's triangle groups. So basically, it's docking those substituents. And we get a results table. It's a similar table to what you would see if you if you went to find group, but this is obviously a, a smaller smaller table. So um, it's ranked. We could rank it by VLS score. So the most preferred the the, the, the substituent um, is the chlorine uh, has a minus twenty five score. So you can double click here, and it will load that substituent in place, and it gives you the VLS score of minus 25. Uh, the least favorable substituent uh, was well, reasonable, actually. Um, well, the, the minus 24, minus 23, without any substituent, it's, it's minus 23. So they, they, all of these actually improve the, the interactions. So that's good. Uh, you may, you can also play around with other, um, obviously with other other changes. 
uh, to try and um, maybe uh, interact with some unsatisfied hydrogen bonds in the receptor and build build up and, and along to do that. Okay. So um, once you made your substituent your change, you may you can also fully redock that ligand and. Um, I won't show you because it takes uh, a minute or so to, to run and it's also a bit slow with the WebEx running but um, you can just click on this button here and that will do a full redock of the ligand and you will see a um, you know, similar thing as we saw. Um, you see the uh, the ligand uh, jumping around in, 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 the, in the sampling the, uh, the energy using the uh, uh, most of ICM bias probability Monte Carlo method. So, moving on to the next slide. So, ligand docking. Inside the ICM ligand editor, um, we have uh, the our ICM docking technology, which uh, was developed by Ruben Abagayan and, and Max Totroff, who Max Totroff is the principal scientist here at Molsoft, and Ruben is the founder of Molsoft, and he's at uh, UCSD. This was back in uh, 1994 papers describing the internal coordinate mechanic methods, ICM docking, and um, this paper describes the um, the bias probability Monte Carlo um, method that we use for docking. So in the ligand editor you can uh, dock a modified ligand that as I showed you. You can also, if you have a for example, an empty pocket, you can dock a chemical table, which I'll show you in a minute. We can screen a database of substituents. We also have methods available uh, to incorporate induced fit. So, for example, on the left hand side, we have um, 4D docking, and uh, which is a method to incorporate um, induced fit. Uh, so, if you have multiple receptors or certain models of your receptor you can dock uh, directly and seamlessly into those into into each of those uh, structures. Uh, we also have a way of refining the side chains. So you make a change, you may want to see if, if the if the pocket can make certain small rearrangements in order to accept that change. I'll show you that as well. We also have a, a ligand up to now these have been structure-based uh, methods using creating structure, but if you may be in a scenario where you have a collection of, of ligands that you know bind, and um, so you can superimpose those ligands and then dock to the property fields or a, so a, a sort of a, 3D, a continuous uh, 3D multi-component uh, potential. Uh, for those fields. So rather than docking to the protein, you're docking to a, um, for example, here we have um, some some ligands superimposed, and then we can say that this region is, has a propensity to have a hydrogen bond uh, acceptor and a hydrogen bond donor here, um, a lipophilic region here, for example. So uh, it's, a, it's a, a ligand based method uh, here. We can also do um, covalent docking directly inside the ligand editor and you can also dock fragments and, and link those fragments as well. And there's also uh, docking using uh, tethers and distance restraints. <clears throat> so um, if we go back to ICM. Um, I'll try and show you some of those things. So, uh, one thing to show is the docking, which is you could just redock a single a single ligand here. We can dock a table. I'm just going to delete these results table and, and read in. So, if you, usually your your database would be an SDF format, or you maybe downloaded a a database from one of the chemical suppliers. So um, in this example, I have a, a database of fragments. So you read that table in and you can see 
the table has 49 rows. Um, I can and then just select the uh, fragments I want to dock, or if you don't make a selection, it will dock the whole table. Then you go to Advanced and choose uh, Dock Table. It asks for the table name, which is called Fragments, um, a thoroughness value, which is a representation of the length of the simulation based on the number of uh, a calculation based on the size of the, the, the ligand. Um, generally, for, for small molecules, um, thoroughness of two is, is reasonable, but in the ligand editor, um, because you're usually just docking one or two or three ligands at a time, you can maybe increase the thoroughness to, 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 to do a, a longer simulation. So if you're doing screening millions of compounds, you may want to keep the thoroughness to be maybe two or one, uh, just, just to be um, efficient. And then you'd go OK, and you'd get the results table as we saw before. Uh, you may have made some changes to your to your ligand, and you want to see whether there's any uh, flexibility in the side chains that you may so you can sample the refine the side chains by clicking on advanced and choose receptor side chain refinement. It asks you which uh, side chains you want to sample. Just go OK, and you can see that the side chains are, 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 are moving around being sampled. And then once that's finished, you would um, you'd reassess the score and you get different things. It's going to stop it halfway through. And uh, just evaluate it. It didn't, it didn't fully run, but it, even though it didn't fully finish, uh, the VLS score um, has improved. Okay. So, um, so that's one way of um, for the for side chain refinements. That's one way of incorporating induced fit. Um, as I mentioned in the in the slides, there's another way, which would be to um, use multiple receptor confirmations. I have a, a short example. For that, it's going to load a new session of ICN, and um, okay. Okay, so in this example, we have three nuclear receptors. They're all the same nuclear receptor. But in order for this uh, ligand we have here to bind, that pocket needs to adapt to that ligand. So what we would do is um, we would superimpose these three receptors by selecting them and choosing superimpose in the display tab. It asks which one you want to have as um, a static object, so all of these two will superimpose on here. Go OK. And if we look at the, the pocket, um, just undisplay that. So we can color, just for simplicity, we can color by object. If you click and hold on ribbon tab, for example, you can color by object. Um, here, and we can also do the same for the side chains around the pocket. Um, you do it on the they're displayed in stick, so click and hold and say color by object C, which will color the carbon atoms according to the the object. So we can see even that um, certain residues. Um, there's flexibility in these side chains, basically, in, in this protein. Um, there's also sort of small loop movements as well. Um, you may want to be more specific in the superimposition and, and just select the residues in the pocket exactly the same way um, you can do that. You can see, for example, this phenylalanine uh, significantly shifts. Um, 
And so it's important, you know, to, to design uh, for this example to, to maybe incorporate all three of these different pocket confirmations when you're designing the ligand. So in the ligand editor, it's pretty straightforward um, to, to set it up. Um, <clears throat> the steps are exactly the same. You click on the ligand. It's asking me which is the ligand. The ligand is this one, ACO1. You go OK. And, and then to choose multiple receptor confirmations, you select uh, using the control button, for example, hold the control and click. And then we go to receptor setup. Um, rather than just choosing a single object, we're choosing three objects uh, here. And um, you can choose once again make box around existing ligand, and it will build the 4D maps. Which takes a little bit longer because there's obviously more maps to make. So um, I have the way it will look when it's finished. Um. <clears throat> yes, yeah, so once it's, it's finished, um, we will see in the Ligon Editor a new panel, which basically allows us to toggle between each of the receptors in our in our structure. So um it's gonna display it in in ribbon. Okay. And then we can use the editor tools in the same way for this um for the as as we were doing before basically. Um and, and and when you redock, uh, you you don't click you click and hold on here, and you choose redock in multiple receptors for uh, D. So um, you you can see if you've made the 4D maps uh, because the maps will have 4D here. So 4D is just a an extra dimension because we're using multiple receptors rather than a single uh, receptor. So the 4D maps have been made. And when you redock, um, you get the the score again um, for, for each of the, the ligands. So VLS score here, and um, energies for hydrogen bonding, hydrophobicity. And it also tells you which of the three, in our example, which of the three receptors um, this ligand prefers. And, and in all cases, it, it prefers um, receptor one, which is shown here. So that's 4D docking. It's, it's everything's exactly the same. You can make the pockets for each of the receptors. Uh, you can find groups as well, um, and then and also edit in the same way, but for multiple receptors. Um, I had a question um, about uh, fragment databases. Um, we we have on our website. Um, I, I I can't go to it at the moment, but um, you know, we have a database called Molcart, which uh, we have two separate databases. One is a screening database, uh, which is a, a database of, of you know drug-like compounds, and there's a separate database called um, of, of fragments, basically building blocks. Um, you can download those there. Uh, we also have inbuilt fragments or substituents here, but for screening um, purposes. And if you want to add your own, you can do add new, and you can draw your own fragment, and uh, what have you. <laughs> um, uh, and then, and that that will uh, add it to to this table, so you can you can add that uh, here. Um, and also, we have an inbuilt database, uh, which which is in the distribution, which you get with ICM. Um, which we'll which we'll use here. In, in, you can you can screen what called fine groups. Okay. Um, I was going to just one one last example. Yes, I had a question about the um, the docking score and how well it relates to experimental binding data. 
So generally, um, the score is primarily designed um, to discriminate uh, binders uh, from non-binders. Um, uh, but it, in some scenarios where you have um, really high resolution x-ray structures and a large series of experimental points, you may be able to, 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 to correlate um, the two. But in general, it's, it's the, primary, the, the aim of the score is to um, indicate whether the, the, the big end is going to be a binder or a non-binder uh, to that particular target. Um, there's no particularly particular good score, um, although uh, a positive score is, 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 is not going to be good. But um, generally, the cutoff, which we, we, we talk about in our manuals, is minus 32. But it depends on the target um, that you have. Um, if you have a, a complex already, you may want to uh, look at the score of that ligand of the known binder, and, and that, that gives you a, a sort of threshold, a benchmark, um, in order to evaluate whether you're improving the, the score or not. Um, yes, so the, the final example is um, ligand based uh, design. It's just uh, a quick example. Um, it's just kind of the, uh, the opposite to what, what we've been doing. Um, so here we have, um, here I've taken uh, four cyclooxygenase uh, inhibitors, for, uh, like the famous Vioxx and Celebrex and, and, and ligands like that, and uh, indomethacin. Um, they're superimposed according to how they're bound to the pocket in the in the um, in their crystal structures. But you may you may want to, you can use our chemistry tools for the superimposing. Um, and basically, um, this is imagine we're in a scenario where we don't have the pocket, but we have a, a great selection of of ligands uh, with, with known experimental data. Um, so we can superimpose these these compounds. And then dock to the atomic property fields of these of these ligands. So we can do that in the ligand editor. Um, basically, you go to the uh, to the setup receptor because this is, this is really now our our receptor, and we choose the APF tab, and um, we select using the control key the templates that you're interested in, and um, and then basically ICM will, will use those to, to build the maps. Um, just, uh, yeah. You can also um, use uh, excluded volume as well. So you, you may have a selection of uh, ligands and you also have maybe one of the ligands in a crystal structure. And so, um, when you're docking, you you may you can define an excluded volume where where you, you where you'll get a penalty penalty for adding a substituent, which which would likely clash with the receptor. Um, but in this case, we'll just use uh, this example. So it builds a series of maps again for um, seven different um, pharmacopoeic uh, properties. Such as hydrogen bond acceptors, hydrogen bond donors, uh, uh, lipophilic regions, and hydrophobic regions, and um, such like. Uh, that, that paper is, this method was developed by uh, Max Totroff, and the, the method is fully described here in this paper here. Um, so basically, you can visualize these fields. Here and so when you make any edits, um, you'll basically dock these dock the ligand into into these fields and give you a score in a similar way as before. Okay, um, so that basically ends this, the 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 seminar. Um, next week we have um, a seminar a webinar on. Um, uh, Virtual ligand screening. So this is a, a higher throughput uh, virtual screening, docking you know, millions of compounds to, to a receptor, um, and also using 4D docking and what. 
Um, we also have, uh, if you have any questions, once again, feel free to um, email me and or, or, or give me a call. And also, if you want to keep track of all the new developments here at Molesoft, um, there's Twitter or Facebook or go to the news uh, and uh, join our mailing list. Thank you very much for, for, for joining the webinar. Um, I'll be here for, to answer some questions. Um, one of the questions we had uh, just, just a minute ago was about the 4D uh, docking. And the question was, uh, do the receptors have to have the same sequence, i.e. Like the same amino acids um, in the pocket? Um, in the ligand editor, they don't, which is useful. So um, basically anything you superimpose, as I showed, um, will be used um, in the 4D docking. Um, so you just select the, the receptors that you have and use it that way. Okay. So if there are any other questions, um, feel free to, um, to put your hand up, or I think there's a way to put your hand up um, using the WebEx, or, or just simply um, type a message in the chat. Thank you very much. Sorry, I have a question. Hi. Hi. Uh, is uh, this presentation available? Can I download it or not? Um, the the the, uh, the ICM that I was showing is is called ICM Pro, um, and ICM Chemist Pro. Uh, they they have um, a, a license fee for those products, uh, but we yes. do offer um, a, a two week um, or, or sometimes more um, trial license. And so, you, so you can test um, the software. Yes. Maybe it's the uh, old version which is available, no soft. An old version or? Yes, old version. Um, if you have an old version, most likely the Ligon editor is not included. It's, it's been developed maybe in the last three years um, ah. using that. So you, you'd have to upgrade. Um, so yeah, if you want to email me offline, I can I can check what license you have and you know whether mm -hmm. you can get the upgrade. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I had a question whether it's good. This uh, the webinar has been recorded. It has been recorded. So um, I'll I'll try and put it online so you can you can view it. Um, I had a question. Um, on the chat, um, is there any way to script the 4D docking uh, instead of doing it all graphically? Um, absolutely, yes, there is. Um, uh, probably, if you want to do that, um, next um, next week's seminar is probably going to be more relevant. Um, uh, I can we we can go into a bit in, in the because uh, the, the ligand editor is more designed for graphical sort of uh, visual visually <laughs> changing things so using the docking menu um, you can set up the 4d docking and run it in, in batch um, on a server or uh, whatever you want to do with it thank you Um, I had a question uh, regarding um, the VLS score 
and there's another score there as well. Um, the difference between the two um, is this one second. It's basically that in the in the VLS score, um, we use the the, the the comparison of the difference between the, the the energy of the ligand outside of the pocket com compared to the um, the strain inside the pocket. So there's an extra parameter there. That's why they they differ very slightly. Um, but you, when you're optimizing the ligand, it's best to just use what either what either score really is fine. But as long as you're consistent and you use one or the other, um, it'll be good. Uh, the next seminar, I had a question about the next seminar. Um, maybe I've got the date wrong. I think it's August the 9th. Um, let me just double check. Sorry, 19th. <laughs> Sorry, August 19th. So that's two weeks. Not next week, it's the week after. Thank you. And that should be a Monday. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, <laughs> the ninth is in three days' time. Sorry, yeah, nineteenth, and then the one after that um, is on um, atomic atomic property fields. So that would be uh, lead, um, it'd be ligand-based um, screening, uh, ligand-based superposition, and also um, Max Potroff has a paper on how to um, superimpose um, protein pockets, uh, which maybe bind the same target, but are uh, and so have the same properties, but have different sequence. And so you can use atomic property fields for superposition of, of proteins as well. Um, yes, and then in September, um, we will have another series of webinars, but it would be, be nice to have some suggestions of what would be most interesting. <clears throat> um, I had a question about how the, the recording of this is going to be shared um I'll, I'll send an email to everybody who is who is on on the on the webinar and you can download it there by email andrew hi hi it's camera um hi, just you can hear me fine i just want to ask a quick question sure um, so the very last uh, step you had shown was starting with the ligand which i guess becomes the receptor yeah um, in that example so mm -hmm. what if you were trying to dock that into a receptor that um, only has partial structure um, i know that the part of the structure would have to be built but is it wise to do the docking first and do the induced fit and then build based on that so you're talking about the the ligand based, yeah. The, the ligand based. Um, so you, when you mean part of the structure, do you mean you only have part of the the ligand or part of the receptor? Or so I have I have the ligand, mm -hmm. and I have um, in your example one of the examples you gave um, of three structures. I could superimpose them, but one of the structure is missing part of that pocket. Oh, okay. So I'm kind of confused at which way to start. Um, Mm -hmm. when doing the docking. So what would you suggest? Um, if you have, it's going to be difficult to use the one without part of it. You could use a sort of hybrid ligand based and then use the, um, if the ligand is a very good binder and hopefully you maybe have some additional ligands that are yeah. similar that you can one super of, One of the structures is solved with the ligand. Mm -hmm. no. And do you have any other ligands that you could, because you could superimpose those and, and, and just use ligand based um, in that case. Okay. Um, if there's a gap, you may, you, you could build a model of that region, but obviously you have limitations because of the model. Um, I guess that's what I'm asking. Is, should the model come after doing the ligand docking of um, building that portion of the structure of the receptor? Um, it's, it would have to see the example to 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 be sure the the correct protocol to do it. But um, uh, probably if, if you're unsure and of that region of the pocket and it and it's a critical region of the pocket, um, you, you, it's risky to to use a structure-based uh, approach. So maybe the ligand-based approach would be a good 
just using purely the atomic property fields would be a good way around that situation. Okay. Um, unless you have, uh, unless you are very confident in your modeling in that region, then then you could use maybe 4D docking and use multiple confirmations of the loop of a loop region or something like that in the 4D docking. Okay. Um, yeah. And, and the last thing is, I missed the very first part of the webinar, but um, there are some structures that I wanted to bring in from papers. Is there a way to import that into the um, editor that will automatically break the substituent down of that? Mm -hmm. I guess if I just have it in a PDB, right? But, but yeah. I've had difficulty taking the structure that I've only seen um, not solved, but uh, just mm -hmm. biochemically shown to to be an inhibitor. Okay. Yeah, in that scenario, um, you could um, probably the best approach would be to say use the ligand sketcher, uh, the two D editor um, option um, here, okay. and then you sketch your your molecule. Okay. okay. And then <laughs> put it in a table. So you'd append to a chemical table. Uh huh. And then you would then dock. Then you go to, to in the ligand editor. You could dock it by going dock table, and that would dock that ligand. Okay. Okay. So you have, or how many ligands you have in that table? Or you could just completely change this ligand in the two D editor. Uh -huh. uh, so if you go, for example, here with this kinase. Um, I click on on the, this button here to give this panel. Go to the 2D editor button here, and then just completely delete this, and then just you know, draw your own molecule in the pocket. And obviously, you'd have to um, redock it uh, correctly. Yeah, so I just have to resketch it from the paper when there is no structure of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, yeah, and and there's a redock button here. To, yeah, so you'd have to sketch it or. It would be so nice if I could just click a button and, <laughs> and I see him brought it in. <laughs> um, well, it depends what, what it is. Because um, we have, if it's a, a well known ligand um, drug, um, then you, we have a dictionary that um, you should be able to. Well, search. at least, yeah, yeah. Okay. Here, for example. Um, yeah, you could whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, or you can if you have the smile string. For, that, that's a relatively quick way of doing it. Um, you just do uh, so. If, um, you could get the smile string and then just paste it um, here. Okay. Uh, For example, and then that—it's a quick way of drawing it. Uh, I misspelled something in the string, but um, uh, yeah, that can, be, yeah, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can do it that way. You just paste it. Um, just paste it here. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, you can also search, I think, here as well, um, drug bank, for example, or by ligand code from. So yeah, there's a number of quicker ways of bringing in the in the in the ligand rather than sketch. Okay.
I don't think there are any more questions as far as I can see, but um, I'll just wait a couple more minutes and then we'll close down the webinar. So the next one is the 19th. Sorry, it's 19th of August. Thank you.